I'm David Tracy with Jalopnik. I'm at a junkyard near Detroit on a quest to grab the coolest car parts I can find, take them back to my workbench, and show you how they work. Let's see what I can find. Okay, so I'm gonna look for some cooling systems. So we're going straight to the Jeeps, because I love Jeeps, and I have a bunch of Cherokees. And we're gonna look at, some, at a cooling system, because I can take those apart in two seconds. Look, here's a Jeep Cherokee right here. Um, looks like the front end is off and we can, the whole cooling system is exposed, so this will be easy to take all the parts off. The three main components of any cooling system uh, are the water pump, the radiator, and the thermostat. One of the reasons why I love the Jeep Cherokee so much, so easy to wrench on. There's the thermostat right there. Now to get the water pump and the radiator. Alright, so to get to the water pump, I have to loosen this here tensioner to remove the belt. So, let's take the serpentine belt off. All right, there we go. Serpentine belt, this is what drives your water pump. So, disconnected the trans lines and all the radiator hoses. And, oh, we got some coolant coming out still. So there's some rusty coolant, and then at the bottom we got some red transmission fluid. Okay, I took the pulley off the water pump, and it should be unbolted now, ready to come off the engine here. Come on, heater coil line. There we go. Yep, there's our water pump. You can see the impeller. Now we're ready to go back to my workbench and have a closer look. All right, so now that we've got those parts out of that Jeep Cherokee, I was able to combine them with some stuff I had sitting around the house to create essentially an entire Jeep Cherokee cooling system right here on my workbench. So let's do a quick overview since it's all out in the open. Starting with the water pump. That water pump is driven by your engine via a serpentine belt like this one. That pump pushes coolant through your engine block, up through the cylinder head. Once that coolant has reached a high enough temperature, a thermostat will open, allowing the coolant to flow into the radiator. That's when oncoming airflow, aided by these cooling fans, will suck heat out of that coolant. By the time the coolant reaches this side of the radiator, it will have lost significant temperature and it will re-enter the water pump, pick up more heat through the engine, dump that heat through the radiator. It's all a big cycle. That was a high level overview. Now let's look at it in detail. All right, so now that we've got that cylinder head off, we can have a look at where the heat is actually generated and that's in these cylinders. That is where the combustion reactions occur. The heat from those controlled explosions gets transferred through the metal and into the coolant, which is flowing through water jackets in both the block and the cylinder head. We're first gonna have a look at the water jackets in the block by removing this water pump and also popping out these freeze plugs. Okay, so the water pump is off and you can see the impeller. This is what's driven by your serpentine belt and what pushes your coolant through your cooling system. This lower radiator hose has a spring in it to prevent the hose from collapsing from the low pressures at the pump inlet. All right, these freeze plugs here are there to act as drains for sand from the internal casting. But now I'm gonna pop them out to get a closer look at the cooling jack. So with the coolant or water pump off and the freeze plugs popped out, you can get a nice close look at how the cooling jackets surround the six cylinders. They go around and in between them and pick up the heat and then send the coolant out through a bunch of holes here on the deck and into the cylinder head. The cylinder head has a number of passages on the bottom where coolant flows into and then surrounds the valve seats which we're gonna have a closer look at as soon as we remove that thermostat. All right, so with the thermostat housing off, and especially with the valve cover removed, you can really see how when the coolant enters the cylinder head from the block, the coolant goes around the intake and exhaust valves to keep them cool. Now the thermostat itself is a wax style thermostat. It's got this little capsule filled with wax that expands when it gets hot, opening a valve and allowing coolant through the thermostat housing and into the radiator. We're gonna show you exactly how this works right now with a little experiment. 
Okay, so the thermostat's job is to stay closed up until a certain temperature, in this case, 195 Fahrenheit. The idea there is to allow your engine to warm up for better fuel economy and to prevent sludge. Once your temperature reaches a certain level, the thermostat will maintain that engine temperature. What's gonna happen is the wax in the capsule is gonna try pushing a piston out, but since the piston isn't gonna move because it's held to the casing, the capsule itself is going to be pushing itself back against a spring opening a valve. So it's only been in the pot for a few seconds there and it's already open out of the pot and it's already closing. We're gonna put it back into the pot, let it open and we'll quench it in the cold water to see how quickly it goes from fully open to fully closed. So now that you've seen how a thermostat works, we're gonna have a look at the thermostat housing, which has two outlets here. One goes to the radiator and is completely blocked by the thermostat. When it's cold outside though, and that thermostat's closed, you still want coolant cycling through your system. You don't want it to stagnate. So what you have is a bypass here. If you, if you look at the coolant outlet on your cylinder head, there's a little notch there to allow coolant around your thermostat and into this bypass so that the coolant can flow out of this tube into a heater core, which is what's used to warm up your cabin. And then the coolant comes back from your heater core and enters your water pump through this little pipe here. It then goes into your engine and the cycle continues. What you can also see in this thermostat housing is a coolant temperature sensor. This is called a thermistor. Its resistance drops with temperature. So your engine can use this voltage signal to make changes to things like fuel to air ratio and also to cut on cooling things. All right, so speaking of fans, the Jeep Cherokee has two different kinds of fans. It's got an electrical fan, which is what most modern cars have. And the Cherokee also gets a mechanical fan, which is what you see in most older cars or in commercial applications. This mechanical fan is driven by your serpentine belt. It's on your accessory drive and it's controlled by a thermal spring. So when your coolant gets hot, the coolant will enter your radiator, and since the coolant is really hot, the air that passes through your radiator will also be hot, and it will activate this spring, which controls a silicone fluid inside this clutch. Ultimately, what that will do is it will couple this fan to the actual pulley. In other words, when it's hot, your fan speed will be very similar to what your serpentine belt speed is. When it's cold, your serpentine belt will spin the pulley, but your fan will still go nice and slow. Ultimately, the jobs of these two fans are to suck air through your radiator. So usually the fans will either sit in front of or behind your radiators, and there will be a shroud to help suck air through. The coolant enters your radiator from your thermostat. It enters this side and goes through these tubes. You can see the fins between the tubes. Those fins are there to help the air pick up heat from the coolant in this radiator. Ultimately, the coolant winds up over here in this tank at a lower temperature, exits this tank and goes back into your water pump to cycle through your cooling system. Now we're gonna cut this thing up and look inside this radiator. Should be cool. I'm gonna cut off the end tanks and then I'm gonna cut straight through the core. How awesome was that? We cut this thing open, and now we can really see how it works. So, coolant enters through this port right here and fills up this tank. And you can actually have a look at the inside there. Coolant in this tank flows through these tubes. The wide, very, very uh, short tubes. And coolant then flows through, and heat gets transferred to these fins. You can get a better look at the tubes here. This one is a two row radiator, so you can see one, two rows. And by the time it gets to the other side, it fills this other tank, 
And it actually, in this case, it surrounds the transmission cooler. So you've got your transmission oil lines that get cooled by your coolant. With the other radiator hacked up, I brought another one in to show how a pressure cap works. A pressure cap's job is to regulate the pressure in the cooling system to a value higher than ambient. The idea there is that your engine wants to run at elevated temperatures, but it doesn't want to boil its coolant because that can cause it to overheat or damage the pump. So one way to raise the boiling point of coolant is to pressurize the system. In this case, this radiator cap is rated at 13 PSI. The way it works is there is a spring inside that gets compressed when the cooling system pressure exceeds a certain PSI. For example, whenever the coolant warms up and expands, it would then push down on this spring, unseating this seal from its mating surface and allowing coolant to enter this tube and into the bottom of this recovery bottle. Then, whenever your engine cools down, the vacuum in your cooling system will actually open another valve in your pressure cap, which will then suck the coolant back from your bottle back into your radiator. Most modern cars have their pressure caps on their bottles, and that bottle actually has a steady flow of fluid through it and back into the water pump. That is called a surge tank system or a hot bottle system, um, but both, both systems, the recovery and the surge tank system, accomplish the same thing. But that's it, that's the end of our cooling system deep dive. Let's see what the junkyard has in store for us next time. The whole cooling system is exposed. Except for what the heck? Well, that could have been bad. <laughs> this was in here for a reason. <laughs>